Hey, it's Simon. And this is Martina. And we're broadcasting out of Kichijoji. Tokyo, Japan, the loveliest part of all of Japan. Mm, it is quite beautiful right now. It's cherry blossom season. Yes. <gasps> it's getting really warm and right. then super cold at night and you're inappropriately dressed for the balance. It's like 21 degrees in the afternoon mm, and then and something like four degrees or one degree at night it just the temperature changes so abruptly we're on our bicycles we're like why did we wear our hoodies today and exactly. the two of us are like like shaking cold mm-hmm. but otherwise it's lovely it's springtime the birds are out mm-hmm. freaking flowers are coming up sakura is almost happening and today we're going to be talking about love yeah and a thesis that i think is a, a harsh one but i i'm going to try to defend it in a way that doesn't sound bad and this is our own thesis this okay. isn't someone else's and the thesis is you and I are not soulmates. Ooh. That's a tough one. And I so Ooh. there's a little bit of like backstory to this. So I was on Reddit the other day and mm. I found a tweet. It's not from one of you guys or anything. It was just a online one, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's from Iman Europe. I don't know who this is, but they're verified on Twitter. And it says, don't let this tainted self-love trend have you 15 alone because you walked away from everything that didn't serve you instead of learning conflict resolution. And then the number one comment for that was people believe in soulmates too much to deal with any inconveniences and imperfections. And I believe this to be very true. And Mm -hmm. this is why I think that you and I don't fit the old model of soulmates because I believe the way that soulmates have been described before is two people meet that are just a perfect fit together Mm -hmm. in like a piece of a puzzle and then they just get together happily ever after the end. I hate the idea of happily ever after because there is a lot of unhappiness that happens that you work through a lot of growth Mm -hmm. that people work at and i think people don't see the hard work aspect of relationships and that's kind of one of the the things i want to talk about today i was like am i part of this podcast what's happening are you monologuing i'm like it's good lord well i wanted to say to you Uh um that the whole reason why we started talking about that was because of a comment from one of our nasties right so i was trying to explain first that um we got a comment from someone being like i'm never going to find like sometimes you guys make me feel really empty because i feel like i'm never going to find um my simon that's what it said in the comment. yeah and they yeah. said that um you know they felt like uh they kind of lose hope because they're like i'll never find someone that good mm-hmm. and so i wrote back to them um and this is how we got started talking about it and mm-hmm. i said to them that you know when i met simon like simon has gone through phases in his life without me he's right? been a shitty teenager yep you know you didn't study and you very were bad difficult boy. to your teachers yeah you were like a total jerk right you only played basketball i know you didn't help your family out. i was like, inconsiderate and selfish and very misogynistic growing up. And if we went to the same school, that probably would have gone, like we never would have ever worked things out in adulthood. Yeah, right? exactly. But Simon changed mm-hmm. and he changed and he became a better person mm-hmm. and he went to university and discovered a whole realm of different types of people. Right. Different women doing inspiring things. Yep. Because I think you were talking to me about um, your perspective of women before because of your... Well, the the kind of environment that I grew up in... Um, you could call it the hood if you want. It's, <laughs> it wasn't super dangerous like everyone's dying getting shot. I do know somebody that got shot, though. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> so, and people maybe, robbed each other's houses. People and people robbed, were... you know, so it wasn't great. But I grew up in very much like a, a rap video culture. Like mm. that's what I grew up watching. And I always, you know, believed. Well, not necessarily believe, but I always saw the women uh, like just in rap videos, just like shaking their asses and mm-hmm. being nothing but like sex objects yeah. for men and they seem and, happy about it like they seem to be yeah. like yes i'm so happy right. that and you're men giving always, me the champagne like, shower and they stuff. were always discussing women as like hoes or things to be like thrown aside yeah. or having like side chicks or this and that yeah. and there was never really anybody trying to do any good and you know i saw this in like the friends around me like i heard this in like close people around mm-hmm. me as well like they espouse this idea and it wasn't until i really met you mm-hmm. that i found somebody that i really truly respected as a woman it took me it took me a very long time like i had a really bad idea but then when i saw you first i'm like holy fuck you're smoking hot Mm -hmm. and that was the first thing that attracted me but then the more that we talk like i'm more than just a body you're more than just a body like i love your thoughts i love your personality a Mm. lot more than your body and that's saying a lot because i really love your body (laughs) 
<laughs> but it Do took you mind me, if I stroke you up? It, it took me a while to get that. And I'm mm-hmm. not sure if people see that mm-hmm. in a relationship. Yeah. Well, well, they, they can't. Uh, mm-hmm. What they're seeing on the... And the reason why I asked you to share this is yeah. not because I'm like, Simon used to like the hose. Yeah. I'm just, what does that make me? Right. No, the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because they only see the product right now, which mm-hmm. is, look at these two people. He makes her coffee and he right. takes care of her. Mm-hmm. And he's so patient and loving and mm-hmm. I want Simon. And right. it's like, Simon didn't respect women before he met me. Yeah. So he met me. We got to know each other. Right. Um, at the time, I had a boyfriend. Yeah. When I first saw Simon, I wasn't attracted to him. Mm-hmm. I wasn't not attracted to him. Mm-hmm. It was just that I had a boyfriend. So I'm yeah. not supposed to be attracted. Yeah. yeah. Um, we got to know each other as friends. Mm-hmm. And I thought he was just a totally awesome stand-up guy. Mm-hmm. He was patient. Mm-hmm. He was nice. He was kind. But he wasn't hitting on me. And yeah. He wasn't laying it on thick or anything. He mm-hmm. was just being a good person. Mm-hmm. Even when I, he wasn't like, I wasn't looking. What's it called? When you thought I wasn't looking, like you weren't just trying to do things nice because I was there. Yeah. You know, it some wasn't people just do for that. the show. It wasn't for the spectacle. It yeah. wasn't like conspicuous. Yeah. It was just a matter of like, I wanted, I cared I for your well being. No, no, I have a secret example. Okay, go I for it. I saw you opening a door for like a sweet older lady on the U of T campus. Oh. And I was really far away. All right. And I was doing that squirrel joke that we do when we would be squirrels mm. and we'd go, and yeah, we'd, yeah. we'd pretend to like bound up to each other. Mm-hmm. I had like an off pet squirrel on university campus. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the gray squirrel that I'd sit with every morning? And right. Give I remember. Yeah. I gave him biscuits. Mm-hmm. Probably shouldn't have. But anyhow. Um, and I saw you. I saw you waiting there. And then I saw a woman walking past and you like kind of scrambled over before she like you didn't see her at first. And you were like, oh, gosh. And you scrambled over and you opened the door for her. Right. And I was like, he's a kind person that's always been this way with me. Mm-hmm. But he's not doing it just to hook me. Right. You know, and I fell in love with you. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. So I'm glad you did. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then over time, of course, we had arguments, fights and disagreements. Right. I, I don't think people see a lot of the effort that goes into this because we don't show it and we don't talk about it a lot. But there are plenty of times that we'll yeah. stay awake to like 4 a.m. discussing our own issues, our own inner yeah. demons, trying to like help each other work through yeah. things. It's things not... Things that might be trying to sabotage yeah. the relationship. Like I went through a lot of hardships with yeah. um, accepting my EDS yeah. to the point where I was really trying to push Simon away and be right. like, because I didn't want him to be stuck sure. with somebody who had a handicap like mine. Right. And I felt like we used to do all this fun stuff together and now I can't do all the things I used to do. So my own insecurities caused me to start pushing him away like oh of course you wouldn't want to take care of me or like you know I don't want that tea because I started to feel guilty about it uh-huh. and Simon's like girl I love you I'm never gonna leave you and we had to work through these kinds and, of things and there's you know? a lot of work and I, I it seems like whenever I look at places like relationship advice as soon as somebody does something wrong they're like it's time for you to lawyer up hit the gym and find a new person mm-hmm. and leave and nobody really wants to Put the work into mm. something. Now, we're just really quickly, I'm going to say as a disclaimer, yes. there are abusive situations. Of course. We're obviously not discussing that. That's the kind yeah. of thing where, of course, you should be leaving it. But right. I mean, smaller situations, like mm-hmm. I know people that argue, every are every single couple is going to argue over money. Right. You know, how does it come in? Uh-huh. Where do we save it? How much can we spend on something? Can yeah. you buy a PlayStation? Can you not? Right. Is a PlayStation the same as a dress? Like mm-hmm. these are discussions that people have and they give up on it. And recalibrating your like goals. Like we are very different people now than we were back in Korea like Mm -hmm. the goals that we have now for more like Mm self-care for more like time with each other Mm -hmm. for more like planning for the future like a few years ago we didn't have all that we thought about back then was just like working and making videos and producing and and like overwork because we're definitely like suffer from workaholism we're trying now to get over that but but, you know like every every like 10 years or so things are going to change and you have to be able to want to put in the work for that you say every 10 years or so but i believe it can be even more drastic than that sure it can you know we've talked about this before Mm -hmm. and i don't want to get emotional but i'm just gonna cry Oh, jeez. Oh, girl. I'm having a sensitive time because my dad just died and right. Spudgy died. And so I'm just in a bit of a griefy state. Yeah. But what I was, I was going to say about that was yeah. that like Simon and I got married and my dad got sick about three years in. Yeah. And um, from then on out, we yeah. were in Korea at the time. We just started YouTube. Right. <laughs> so mm-hmm. if you're wondering why we're workaholics, there was a lot of s- mental stuff to be avoiding as right. well. Right. So we just started our first year as full-time YouTubers. Mm-hmm. I just quit my job at Wuchan mm-hmm. Yogo and my dad's leg had started to yeah. shake and quiver and he was having a hard time at karate. Right. And then from then on out, Simon has only experienced me in the most like 
kind of painful state. Right. And I did a lot of mean thrashing. Yeah. You know, like I did a lot of like denial yeah. about my dad. And right. I went through stages of total depression where yeah. how they couldn't get out of the bed. Really hard, scary, emotional yeah. breakdowns and we've had. Simon could know? have definitely left me. You and know, I never will. Well, though. I know you won't because right? I know that. But I'm saying, you mm-hmm. know, that's an example of a couple that would be like, I can't take this anymore. Like yeah. we've gotten some emails from people that uh-huh. I'm I'm proud that they're pulling through now, but yeah. they have EDS as well. Right. And some people were saying things like their husband left them when they said that you changed and you're different. Yeah. And I was like, that person, not you, but uh-huh. the other person who left right. just wasn't willing to work on things. Right. And the person who had the condition, yeah. if they were being nasty and mean, mm-hmm. because I've done that, yeah. I've had my pain lash out. Right. I said, I can't, I got to face this. I'm being nasty and mean. It's and so you sa- have to try together. There is a very strong sense that people have of individualism. They're like, this is exactly who I am. This is who my personality and I want somebody to fit that perfectly. And they don't understand their personalities and identities as fluid and transient. And we grow and we develop and we become different people. I'm not the same person I was before I met you. No. I was a shitty person and we're going to keep on trying to change. But it seems like there's some people like, this is who I am. And if you don't like it, screw you both of you have to be willing to Mm -hmm. forego Mm -hmm. your sense of individualism still have like a sense of individualism but not be like strongly adhering to this Mm -hmm. you have to be able to make Mm -hmm. concessions you have to be able to like like, sacrifice i think we can work i think we can make a really uh good example from something that happened with you and i okay and that maybe other people if you've had this problem let me know maybe simon does not like browsing in the grocery store no He does not like browsing. He doesn't want to browse. He wants to make a list. I worked in a mall for like a very big part of my teenage years. Right. Like I used to work like 70 hour weeks. I had like two different jobs and I just hated shopping Mm -hmm. as a result. I know that it's something that you like. And for up until like last year. Wait, Chodomate. Yeah. Which kind of shopping do I like? Grocery store shopping. Okay. I like grocery store shopping. I don't want to talk about the mall. So I'm saying this is interesting as well. Like you're talking about how you worked in a mall and Uh that's why you hate grocery shopping. Uh I just hate all shopping. Oh, it extends into the grocery yeah, realm because I, I worked hate, at a grocery no, store just, for a year and a half. I just hate all shopping. Okay, all all of it. But I know that like my anxiety and discomfort in a, a supermarket or a mall or or grocery store or anywhere that we went mm-hmm. wound up being uncomfortable for you. Yeah. and I had to just force myself to say, you know what, just go with it just roll with it Mm -hmm. push yourself to your levels of discomfort because your own discomfort is hurting your wife Mm -hmm. and even though it was really painful i saw that as soon as i started making that change in myself you became so much more happier, so much more comfortable, so much less tense when we were shopping, mm. so much more at ease. I just want to give people an example because yeah. you, you're you not that bad. It's just that you're uh-huh. giving, you're like, oh, I'm like, this is all that happened. Uh-huh. You'd go to the grocery store and Simon would have a list of like five items. He's like, yeah. milk, eggs, butter, bread, and that's it. And we're leaving. Yeah. And I would say, okay, well, like, but what are we going to have for supper tonight? Like, mm, maybe we should have pork chops. Well, should we have pork chops? Pork chops look really good today. And I'd go to the aisle and I'd mm-hmm. look at the stuff and Simon will be like, if you want to browse, I'm leaving. I'll go sit outside on that bench. Right. And for me, it was a very strange experience because I thought it was a couple thing yeah. where we would discuss or we would buy things because the two of us were little tiny birds in our little tiny nest. And mm-hmm. we'd say, what kind of seeds should we bring home? Uh-huh. I thought it was just kind of like a thing that people did. Right. But we have to remember that people grew up with different lives. They had different jobs. They yeah. had different experiences with grocery shopping. Uh-huh. Grocery shopping for me was a pleasure because I'd go with my mom mm-hmm. every time. And the two of us loved grocery shopping together. Mm-hmm. So instead of us just like not discussing this, right. we tried to make a middle ground. Yeah. Yeah. which was Simon was going to kind of calm down because we are grocery shopping for each other. Mm-hmm. We are looking for things for each other, yeah. but I can't push it to an unfair point. Right. Like I can't expect him to stay, you know, when I go to the candy aisle and yeah. go look at candy and childhood memories, like mm-hmm. Simon will be like, okay, girl, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now it's just this really calm experience where we shop together. We find our things. Mm-hmm. And then I start to look over and I go, I think Simon's kind of at his right. maximum. Right. And so what we practice are like gradual concessions yeah. and, What's a, concession, what's a concession mean for everyone? So like, know? like for me, like I just didn't want to spend any time in a yeah. grocery store and I just said, forget about yeah, it. You so go in there. going, no way. Right? And this is me going, please. Come and in then here. eventually I said, you know what? This like bull, like bullheadedness, stubborn headedness yeah. of mine was resulting in tension with me and tension with Martina. Let me make a gradual concession and like agree to be more open minded and spend more time there. And then you understood that I was making a concession. Effort, yeah. And then you made a similar concession yeah. as well. I'd be like, you're going to spend less time there because, yeah. you know, even though I don't like it, you're mm. doing it for me. You're yeah, going to so we were both we were both trying to change things for each other. But from the traditional ideas of soulmates. Your butt was so loud it hurt my ears. 
the traditional idea of soulmates yeah. is that we're like this would be oh we're oh, not soulmates we would never have even had this conversation we would never have because soulmates should automatically know what everybody like the, soulmates would say mm-hmm. My love, I shall go get us groceries. And right. you'll go, okay, my charming duck, mm-hmm. let's go together. And we'd go, tra-la-la, and like, I don't have to work for livings. I think that's a very unrealistic yeah. and unfair thing mm-hmm. for people to expect. And there's one thing that I see in the comments often that concerns me a little bit. Mm-hmm. And some of you might have said this as well. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not going to try to scold you, but I want to change people's ideas about this. I often see comments like, where can I find a Simon? Where can I get a Simon? Mm-hmm. Where can I find somebody that treats me like Simon? Mm-hmm. I rarely ever see anybody say, how can I be like Simon? Mm-hmm. How can I... How can put, I get better? How can I get better? How can I try to put the effort into a relationship that Simon puts mm-hmm. in? I wonder if I have been yeah. doing something to hurt my spouse yeah. or partner that I should work on. It sounds like the way that these comments come across... Of course, it's only like a few words, so I can't get the full context of a person's yeah. and we individuality. know everyone. A lot of people are trying to be just positive, like, right. "Oh, like I'm lucky. You're lucky. You have a nice and time." I, and we I, understand I, that. I, I love the compliment, but I just don't want this. I, I'm. But we worried. used to study English, so the two yeah. of us get really into things, right. guys. <laughs> I'm worried about the residual effect mm. that some of these phrases mm-hmm. have because I'm not somebody that was found. You're not somebody that was found. We're Mm-mm. we've created each yeah. other for each other yeah. because we love each other and we want to see each other grow. We we both see potential. Mm-hmm. There are some relationships in which one person puts in a lot of work and the other person mm-hmm. doesn't put in a lot of work. No, I, I can give you like an example from my own life. Right. There was a guy that I dated that mm-hmm. we got along very well and we yeah. were really good at making concessions yeah. and I really loved him and uh-huh. he loved me and we yeah. loved each other a lot. Yeah. But slowly his like lifestyle started yeah. to creep into our time together right. w- to the point that like I've showed up at his house before and uh-huh. he's like, wait a second, I'm almost done. Right. And then he like played video games until I actually just left the house and walked home. And he didn't even notice. He called me at nighttime. It Mm -hmm. was like eight hours later. Like, oh, where did you go? That's when I started to realize that I think his love is towards this. And no matter how much I tried to talk to him about it, it wasn't a conversation that he was willing to change. And so when I broke up with him, I didn't break up with anger or upsetment or screaming. I said, I really love you, but I think you're going to meet somebody who's going to love you for this. Right. Like two gamers finding each other or yeah. two anime people finding each other or two right. food people finding each other. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean a soulmate connection. Right. It's just he wasn't willing to change. Yeah. And he didn't have to, right. but I wasn't going to stay with him. Yeah. Because he wasn't willing to do anything. Right. And if he wasn't willing to do the work, then the relationship isn't going to work. Right. And you and I are so we are not soulmates in that respect, mm-hmm. but we want to be mm-hmm. and we keep on trying to be. We want to be the best we can be for each other. And we know that like as we change, like as like age creeps in and like different things happen to our body and our minds. And Simon's whatnot. getting hair in strange places. I'm losing hair in other places. He's beginning you know? to feel attracted to women. Right. Like there, there are things that. Like we're going to have to keep on trying to grow, to develop because Mm -hmm. we want to see each other Mm -hmm. happy because for us, like for, for me, I know that there's nothing I could do on my own Mm -hmm. that makes me quite as happy as doing something that makes you happy. I could sit at home and I could play video games by myself and be like, oh yeah, that was entertaining. But if I do something like go out and get you flowers or give you a massage so that you feel less pain and I see you happy, that joy that I get out of that is better than any joy that I get from doing something for myself. Okay, well, I'm going to interrupt you and tell you that this is why everyone in the comments are like, I want to get a Simon. And the, right. let me let me just defend this. Yes. I'm on the side of the other people because you are my Simon. Uh-huh. Um, he's my Simon. Back off, everybody. No, just joking. Uh-huh. Um, I think the concept here that you have to think about is that you weren't always in this mindset right you might have enjoyed making me happy yeah but it, it's it's now that you're that you've come to a point where you're like this is really like this is really the greatest thing i really enjoy yeah. this but not everyone's there yet right. so people feel hurt mm-hmm. like when i was dating that other guy when he mm-hmm. couldn't change for me right it felt like i mean obviously he doesn't love me enough right? right but i think that's an unfair thing to say when you think about it yeah i think he did love me yeah but there were just other things that were more interesting to him right. at the time yeah so we always hope that our significant other our partner or our husband or our wife or whoever yeah we always hope that they'd be willing to change for us because they want to make us happy right but then that's when people get into like the struggles like uh-huh. you should want to make me happy like they get into those kind of conversation tones, right right you know yeah and that's not good for trying to ha- have communication with each other yeah right so there you go there's our <laughs> idea that confusing for you yes. <laughs> there, there was a lot for us to go over and like a lot of thoughts that yeah. we had about relationships oh. and soulmates also some of the things we can say tools that have helped us yeah we've gotten a couple therapy yeah and Pe- we still do P- people think that therapy is for people who are 
fighting with each other and mm. it's the last it's like the, it's like, the last we're ditch about efforts. to get divorced we have to go to a, i guess we got to go to therapy well think of it as like a personal trainer yeah. if you go to the gym you don't have to just go to the gym you're like well my back's out i'm 300 pounds overweight and i had a heart attack and i might die can you fix me it doesn't work that way you could also go to a personal trainer like when i was in canada like hey i'm having a little bit of difficulty with these deadlifts i'm not sure yeah. if i'm doing the movement right can you help me out yeah and, and with, there's no there seems to be no shame in that there's there's no, no shame, shame in going to the dentist. Yeah. Hey, my teeth hurt and yeah. I think I have a cavity. Right. I didn't brush it right. They're uh-huh. like, no problem. Right. And there's some times that you and I are like, hey, I'm not sure how we could like come to an understanding mm-hmm. of this because we have like confusion here. Maybe we could speak to somebody yeah. else and like have a better idea. Shine a different With, light on the conversation. Without any anger or, or accusations yeah. because we know that we're in this for each yeah. other. And sometimes you need a little help with your deadlift. There are times where we'll be in the middle of a conversation that we can't seem to resolve. Like yeah. that happened to us for like the grocery store conversation sure. or yeah. other things like where I would say finally, like I just think we should message our counselor and book yeah. an appointment. And I'd saying, be like, yeah, good idea. And he would say good idea. Yeah. And it wasn't hurtful. Like, of course we were arguing with each other at the time but mm-hmm. that wasn't like a mean comment like right. i wasn't like why won't you change for me if you love me that's mm-hmm. what i was talking about the other time where people might argue with each other i've never said that i mean right. they argue with each other and uh-huh. it, then it just makes it worse yeah when i got to that point where i was like this is not working mm-hmm. i said mm-hmm. hey we should go to the counselor and it wasn't a hurtful thing to say right it wasn't me trying to say it to like yeah. make you feel bad make you feel low make yeah. you feel weak no like, we both went like uh-huh. oh yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Why right. don't we think about going to the counselor? People can go to personal trainers and dentists and accountants and ask for help yeah. just fine. But as soon as it becomes like anything about mental health, then it is like the stigma yeah. behind Or couples. It. Yeah. Couples can't talk about the fact that they argue. And by yeah. the way, relationships go like this. Uh-huh. You have times where you're really in sync with each other and everything's right. going great. Yeah. And then something will happen. And yeah. then it may not be even with each other. Right. It could be your job, your Situation, friends, your like family. Your issue with your dad wasn't something that you did. No. It wasn't anything it wasn't your fault at no. all but it's like the the sadness and the grief you know had some like impacts on us and we had to like figure out our way to yeah. work through it and there will be things in the future like my parents will get sick my parents one day will pass mm-hmm. like other family members and friends will mm-hmm. pass and like our we don't have a dog yet but we'll get another dog and he too will pass all right let's like right? slow this down <laughs> <laughs> so i don't mean to be grim but i'm i mean no to i say, say like, that things will happen in life people will get fired they'll get new yeah. jobs you'll lose money you'll be broke and you gotta you'll be willing Again. to work on it yeah. don't hold on to the strong idea of you're waiting for the perfect person that's going to come here and do all these things for you go into a relationship with the idea that like i want to be able to change and grow mm-hmm. with this person our relationship is something we're going to work on together yeah and the last thing that i'm going to say is is that i feel like we see each other as a team yeah and this is advice that i always want to give people yeah when we get glum and when we get low and mm-hmm. when we're the most frustrated right simon will say hey girl i want to let you know that i'm on your team yeah. and i say that's right you're my teammate right. teammates want to win yeah the two of them want to win together right you don't say to your teammate who missed the shot you're a loser and i hate you mm-hmm. the, that would never help you'd right. say don't worry man we'll work on your three pointers like all weekend long yeah. like i'll train with you yeah. or i'll be there for you or like why don't we all get go on a diet together where right. we eat more protein like Whatever it is, you do it together. Yeah. So the attitude of being a team, I mm-hmm. think, is extremely important when it comes into going to any kind of a relationship. Right. Um, and then, yeah, all the rest of the stuff that Simon said before me, that was nice. The, the point is, we have a lot that we could talk about. We've already pretty oh, much gosh. gone over our, our, our <laughs> limit here for today. If you hear that crumpling sound, it's because mm. I just did my hair silver and then mm. the bottoms are being updated pink because yes. they got all washed out. And then I put them in tinfoil. And then what's that? What's that sound? Shower. I wrap them in shower caps. Just another hot tip for what you can do. Right. With shower caps. caps. I want the highest rated comment on this beautiful video to be like, please, Martina, make a video on shower caps. Where can I find myself instead of assignment? Where can I find myself those shower caps? (laughs) Hotel bathrooms. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Yeah.